In this tutorial in Adobe Premiere Elements 2018, we're going to look at how to change the volume or gain inside an audio track. Let's assume that you have audio in your project and you want to slowly increase it or fade it in from soft to loud or fade it out from loud to soft or move it up and down as much as you want inside that one audio track. How do you begin to do that? We're going to show you in this lesson. So I have a video track on the screen with no audio. If I play it, it's just some books moving across the screen as we pan uh, from right to left. And we'll add some audio. I could go ahead and use external audio and put it in my project assets. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to use some internal audio in Premiere Elements 2018. So I'm going to move to the toolbar to the right, click on the music symbol that will add some audio. I'm going to click on the Fun Town option, drag and drop it down at the beginning of track number, audio track number one. And then when it's all done, I'll just click on the word done. We'll close our window at the right. Now I notice that the audio is a lot longer than the video, so we'll make them the same size. I'm going to reduce the magnification of my two tracks, and then I'll take my mouse and hover it over the audio track. It will turn into a red bracket with two black arrows. I'll hold the left mouse button and drag, and we will trim it to match the size of the video. And then we'll change our magnification back to something larger here. So now we have both audio and video. Let's see what it looks and sounds like now. Okay, that works for me, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to fade in the audio. So it starts silent and then slowly builds. How do I do that? The first thing I have to do is highlight my audio track, and then I click on the Adjustments button in the toolbar on the right side. That's the one with the two levers. Now, these are the adjustments we can make in an audio track. We're going to work on the volume one today. Let me show you a little bit about this. First of all, basically all we have is a level. It starts out at 0.0, .0 decibels. Now, that can be misleading if you're new to audio editing. It doesn't mean it's silent. It means it's unchanged. Any audio that I drag into Premiere Elements will start out at 0.0. .0. That means it hasn't been adjusted from its original. If I move the slider to the right, I'll see the number go up. If I move it to the left, it will go down. If I want to turn it back to this normal volume, I simply click on the reset button and that's how I change it. But right now, this would change the audio for the entire length of the clip. All I want to do is change something at the beginning. To do that, I need to keyframe my audio. So let's do that. In order to turn on my keyframing abilities, I need to click on the small stopwatch to the left of the word fix. Now I've got a much larger editing panel. Now another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change what I see below my screen here below the preview window. The audio track has a little right arrow. If I click on it, it'll turn to a down arrow and it will get a lot wider. It gives me some swirls at the bottom and it also gives me a yellow line. This line is my volume line. It is my zero zero on the screen up here. And we'll be able to see the impact of the changes I make here. So in order to change the volume level for part of the track, not all of the track, I need to keyframe. That means I need to say at a certain moment in time, I want the volume here, and another moment in time, I want the volume to be different. So I take my current time indicator, and I can drag it left or right, and you notice this one is tied to the current time indicator below the project, where one moves, the other moves. Now in Premiere Elements, if I want to know where I am with my current time indicator, I look at the numbers below the preview screen. I wish they were replicated up here in my adjustment screen, but for some reason they're not. But this tells me where I am. Now I can move, them, move it with the mouse, 
or if I want to be precise, I can use the left and right arrow keys on my computer keyboard. And that's how I can move it one frame at a time to be very, very precise. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start at the beginning of the project and I'll set a keyframe. Now to set a keyframe, you simply click on the diamond. Now I have a diamond here below the previous screen and a diamond up here, but for some reason this one starts grayed out and I don't know why. So I'm going to have to use this one down here. So I'm going to simply click on here and that will set a keyframe. I see a little yellow button here and I see my black and white diamond up here. Now right now I have set it at 0, 0, so there is no change. If I went to play this there would be nothing that would happen. Let me take the current time indicator here and move it over maybe six seconds or so. And now I can set another keyframe by clicking a diamond or I can set a keyframe simply by changing the value. Um, I'm going to click a diamond for now and now I've got these two screens matching each other. The value I just set in both cases is the same as the normal value. So if I play this, nothing will happen. If I want it to fade in, I need to change the value at the, at the first keyframe. To move between keyframes, you simply click the left or right arrow. Here's the left arrow. And now it's grayed out because I have no keyframes to the left of it. If I click the right arrow, it's, the right one is now keyed out because I have no keyframes to the right of it. If I set another keyframe over here, we'll do that for fun. Now I can move back and forth by clicking the arrows, but now the value is all the same, so it really doesn't matter. If I want to remove a keyframe, I can right click on it and click on cut, and it will take it away. So we're going to move to the initial keyframe, and we're going to say when we start out, we want the volume or the gain to be lower. There are two ways I can do that. The first is simply to move the slider. So I'll take this and move it back. Now it's at infinite zero. And if I look below the previous screen, it gives me a visual representation of the volume. I could also take the keyframe here and move it up and down using the mouse any way I want. You can also slide on either screen. You can also slide the keyframes to the right or to the left to change the moment in time. The farther apart they are, the slower the volume will increase. The closer they are, you notice the tighter the angle down here below the previous screen. So this controls the apparent speed of the volume increase or decrease. So that's how you do you begin to set keyframes at the beginning. You can set them at the middle and at the end, and you can also modify how the keyframe operates. We'll show you that in the next lesson. But this gets you started in keyframing. You determine where you want the value to start and how long it's going to take to get there. And if I move my current time indicator between them, you watch the numbers over here change slightly as it moves all the way up to zero zero so that gives you a very precise way of looking at it i prefer to set keyframes up here in the adjustment screen rather than down here because i have a much better precision to see what's happening i also like the fact that i can magnify this screen so i can see a lot more detail in terms of frames and seconds but we'll deal with more in the next lesson